Sorry. Uh, his please. Father, we ask that you raise your hand upon us this morning, that you have known us, and you continue to bless us as you always have. Pray this morning that you will fill us with the Holy Spirit. Pray that you would, uh, that, uh, that we obey you and obey your guidance, your instruction. We pray that you would, uh, that we walk by the spirit, not by sight. We pray that throughout this service today, that we ask you into our lives and we so we can watch for every opportunity, every opportunity to listen and look for things to do in your holy name. We do it as long as the line of a scripture. Mm -hmm. Praying this morning, we pray for the family of the four year old and uh, family of the four year old that down this uh, weekend. We pray for Sister Lewis, lost a child. We pray for all other who are sick and shedding. We pray for. Elder Michael, this morning, dear Lord, we pray for all that need you. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Go to Matthew with me this morning. And what we're going to do, we're going to start at the 22nd verse. Something I see in there. Which chapter? Uh, huh? Which chapter? Oh, I'm sorry. Matthew 14, starting at the 22nd verse. I want to mention this morning that Sister Cleese in Canada is better. we are sending her back to the uh, I don't think they call them nursing home in Canada. They call them something else. Sister. Yeah, she gone back to Yeah, she gone back. She was in the hospital. They didn't know what was wrong with her, but she gone back. And as always, she always sends her blessings. Yes, so we also not only say good morning to my sister-in-law, but we say uh, hello to all of those beside her who are listening to this broadcast. I understand my sister and some others be listening to uh, Broadcast as well. So we say good morning, children of God. This morning, in the 14th verse, the 22nd, uh, starting in the 22nd verse, Matthew 14, 22nd uh, verse. Uh, we're going to take some time, not just this morning, going forward and talk about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. I think I mentioned it last Sunday, but didn't put too much emphasis on it. No, I'm putting the emphasis on this morning. Uh, we are 100% we are correct to live to by the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But this, especially I know, and in any and all the baptisters that I belong to, we don't put too much emphasis on the Holy Spirit and others than to say, Oh, they got they they got the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. or that type of thing. But we never talk about how the Holy Spirit works within our life. Yeah, Lord. The Holy Spirit was with was was at when creation was uh when uh, at the very beginning during creation, the Holy Spirit was there. The Holy Spirit was yes, there. Was. Well, we'll go into that part of it another time. This morning I want to talk about something that. I think it's very important. Uh, I don't have the time. Uh, 22nd verse says, and I'm reading New uh, Living Translation. He said, immediately, you just got to feed people. Immediately after this, Jesus insists that his disciples get back into the boat 
and crossed to the other side of the lake while he sent the people uh, home. After sending them home, he went up into the hill by himself to pray. Hmm. And I'm going to put an emphasis on that because of the fact Jesus went up in the hills to pray. That hmm. means that he went to get some instruction My Lord. from the Father. Yeah, Lord. He went to get some instruction from the Father. Night fell while he was still, still there alone. He, that's another thing. You, what you're seeing here is he didn't rush to get. He got. He, he stayed there and listened to the instruction that was given to him. And he stayed there. Night came. He still was there. My Lord. That's a, a something that we need to uh, uh, take in consideration. Well. All right. Don't be uh, be in no rush uh, to get away from the voice of, of God. Well. Meanwhile, the disciples was in trouble, far away from land. For a strong wind had risen, had risen, and they was fighting heavy waves. And from a historical point, I want to mention to you that a lot of these men that was on this ship, they was expert fishermen. They knew this passage, they knew this, this water that they was in. But they was in trouble because the water was, the waves were unusual, you know. And I like to say that God had troubled the water. Huh. All right. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came towards them walking. See, from the time he went there, it's three o'clock in the morning. He, you know, that's he on his way back. Three o'clock in the morning. That's a long time to go and pray and talk with God. And he said, about three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came towards them walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they was terrified. Uh -huh. They were terrified. And in their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. It's a ghost. Mm. But Jesus spoke to them at once, said, don't be afraid. He said, take courage. I am here. Take courage. I am here. Then Peter called it to him, Lord, if it's really you, if it's really you, listen to that. Tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Lord, Jesus. Lord but when God. he saw the strong wind and the waves, I want you to take note of that. Listen, when, but when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Mm -hmm. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. Now, we understand Jesus walking on the water. And he reached out and pulled somebody out the water. Think about that. My Lord. That, that would have been scary to me. That's <laughs> right. Uh, you have a, he, he put what he said, save me, Lord. Jesus immediately put, reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? And when they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worship him. You really are the son of God. They explain. Right. Oh, I know. So this morning, briefly, uh, and we're going to continue this and other parts of, about the Holy Spirit. And talk about how they are. Power off. Okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> this morning, we're going to talk about don't let the world distract you from following God's instruction. My Lord. Don't let the world distract you from following God's uh, instruction. Because I'm thinking Thank of something uh, happening in my life. I said, whoa, wait a minute. I'm being distracted. John 14 and 6 says, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, before we get into the core of this message, I'm going to go back to the script and I want you to think about something. He was praying, and no doubt about it, because we see in other passages, uh, other parts of the Bible, that he did pray to the Father for the disciples. And he mentioned that they were going to go through 
through some trials and tribulations, they actually were going to be hated mm -hmm. because they was following him. That's right. All right. So he was praying until three o'clock in the morning. And did you see here in John 14 and 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We have a lot of noise around us right now. My God. And I came to the conclusion, I'm sure a lot of other preachers and Christians came to the same conclusion, is that when they was telling me that uh, uh, I forgot who the person was, but believe it or not, it was a white person in a, in a, in a so-called powerful position made the statement that the answer to America's problems is us. Do you hear me? I'm definitely talking about the Christian. I'm talking about blacks. We the answer to the problem in this country. So if that is so, we, we are Christian because of Jesus, is that right? So if that's so, then why is it that we were riding home yesterday from, uh, from uh, uh, Middleton, you know, with being with my daughter and grandchildren and, and, and Eric and her baby and whatever, son-in-law. And I mentioned someone who was singing on the radio and I asked her, and I was talking about the uh, comment that he made. And in my opinion, it was it wasn't a good comment and what i was saying why is it that we got the power that god if we have the power that god said that we can have why we don't use it i'm talking about myself why we don't use it is that right why is it that we are uh, why is it that we uh allow ourselves to suffer you see me sitting in this chair why is that you know, I mean, uh, I saw something moving on to the message. I saw a brother that was in a, a, a car wreck right here in Cleveland. He was so bad he couldn't hardly walk. Could not hardly walk. I've seen him in the last, just before the pandemic. He walked. I also found out that the man is a very praying man. And every morning, I know for a fact that he would be out there on that highway walking, hand like this, crumped up on him, couldn't hardly get, couldn't get, hardly walk, but he walked every day. And he did it every day. Now his hand is scraped. My God. He's walking. And what is happening is that God gave us power. Yes. And what we don't understand is. God, I want you to heal this trick knee, but I don't want to excise that knee. That's me. Is that right? My Lord. I'm going to try to exercise, but it hurts so bad. I don't think I, I supposed to do 10 minutes a day. I think I do five, maybe I do five and a half. That's enough. God said he wanted you to heal, but there are ways to be healed. These bones are supposed to be worked on. Let's go on. Holy Spirit knows us well and is able to give us power, truth, and strength, among other uh, great uh, qualities and gifts of the Spirit, which enable us to live our lives that we all as committed followers, followers of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Lord. I, I, what I mentioned, the Holy Spirit, they one and the same. What, and what did Jesus say? I am the way. Uh, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father what itself through me. As I was talking to her, it occurred to me why we're not getting these things. We're not getting what we're supposed to get as Christians because we are, I say we, we are distracted. We are distracted. There are so many things around us that 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 that, uh, that uh, get our attention until we miss out on that, which is, which uh, miss out on that what God want us want us to have. Let's look at it and see if I'm see it in in, in, uh, 
if, if you hear what I'm saying and you recognize what I'm saying, I want you to say amen as one. You see, one, I want you to understand is that distraction can be dangerous. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give you just a plain, old, plain, everyday example. Y'all see that commercial where the man riding down the road, his phone fall off down, fall, fall down on the floor. Instead of him driving, he, he trying to get to the phone and the 18-wheeler is coming on the other side. And if the 18-wheeler hadn't blow, it blow his home, he would have ran into it. All because he was distracted by the phone. Is that right? And we know more and more uh, detail uh, like this. So don't let the world distract you from Father God. Unchecked distraction. Unchecked distraction. Mm. Make the gospel unfruitful. In other words, God said, I want you to have an abundant life. But if you distract them with the world as opposed to uh, 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 paying attention to God, don't see. You say, well, I'm going to plant some seeds. But if them seeds are not nature, if them seeds are uh, just, uh, uh, if them seeds just something that you say, well, uh, think about it. When we, when we plant stuff, you get a package of seed and, and you, you, you empty the seed out in the ground. If you put two men on top of each other, they're going to suffocate each other. If you don't spread them out, what's the same way the gospel works, y'all? And then you don't just uh, just because you all of a sudden your back hurts and one day you decide you're gonna plant a seed. Lord, have my back. It don't work like that. So we're gonna talk about it this morning. Matthew 13, Matthew 13, the seven through the twenty second verse says, "Other seed fall." among thorns, thorns, and the thorns grew up and, and what? And choked them. See, we can destroy our blessings by being around people who are unblessed. Mm -hmm. Wait, 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 did you say, um, yes. People who are unblessed. One, they don't know God. They know of God, but they don't know God. And if you don't know God, know God, then God is not in you. For the spirit, uh, uh, you know, you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Huh? And as for what was sown among the thorn, this is the one who hears the word. But the care of the world and the deceiving, uh, a, a, a deceitfulness of riches choke the word and it proves. Unproof and mm. mm. God was interviewing a lot of people yesterday. Trump told everybody that he's gonna be put back in office next month. Well, what you think about that? Well, he is he, he is he, he, uh, uh, he getting what he do. No, what he do, they ain't giving it to him. We ain't getting in there this month. Mm. But what are you doing? You spending time, you spending time on a tail. I read an article, y'all. I'm saying this for a reason. An article of a preacher who says that he's a prophet. And he predicted that Trump was going to win his last election. It didn't happen. He said, God convicted him to say, I didn't tell you to say that. I did not tell you to say that. So he went and told the other preachers that, you know, God did not tell me to say that. He had his mentor, another preacher, who did the same prediction. They both got together and said, God talked to me too and told me that I was wrong and that he did not tell me to say that. So what they did then is, okay, so I'm wrong. So then it is my duty to go and tell the people who follow me, and honest, uh, okay. his name is uh, Jeremiah Johnson. That's the name, Reverend Jeremiah Johnson, young preacher. And he say, so he goes and he tells the other preacher and he tells the people. The people who knew him and preachers who knew him, they turned against him because of the fact, that, uh, because of what he said. Y'all get what I'm saying? But he was talking about the fact that he did not let them distract him. 
his thing is that God teach love, God teach peace, and that's what he was doing. So he's going ahead on. Guess what? His offerings, tear, they, uh, stop giving him off. Make a long story short. His offerings back up 50% now because of what? I am the light. I am the truth. I am your everything. You know what I'm saying? Rely on me. Don't. Okay. Unchecked destruction causes us to forget about judgment. We forget about that God is coming back. Mm. We forget that. You know what I'm saying? So we are, you know, we, we get caught up in the people. And I'm not just talking about that man. He's just a good example. He's a good example of somebody I would use. I care less about one way or the other. About, you know, he, he got to pay God just like I got to pay God. But unchecked, listen to me, unchecked destruction causes us to forget about judgment. Mm. Luke 20, first chapter, 34th and the 36th verse. It says, be careful or your heart will be weighted down <laughs> with carousing drunkenness and the anxiety of life. And that day will close on you suddenly like a trap. Yeah. Luke 21 and 35 say, for it will come on all those who live on the faith of the earth. Nobody, everybody gonna have to be accountable. Everybody gonna, uh, gonna have to account for their life. 36 verse says, be always on the watch. Have you got it? Mm -hmm. Be on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. My Lord. You hear that? My Lord. God warned the people in Sodom and Gomorrah. I want y'all to get out. I want you to get out. And I don't want you to look back. Don't look back. But it always got to be somebody hard here. Is that right? Always got to be hard here. Got to test God. That's what's going on with these vaccines now. Now we almost, now everybody's scared because of the virus, because the virus have mutated and mutated. Now they got one that 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 uh that that is they got them scared. So I'm I'm saying this, Lord, put on my heart to tell y'all. Pretend it's a fashion statement. Put your mask on. <laughs> Get you one. I got one with pleasure on it. I got one with compassion on it. I got one. You know, want to wear my African outfit? I got one of those. Like you know, we had one of them with them got on here. You know, you get what I'm saying? It's a fashion statement. But what is I'm doing? I'm obeying God. Is that right? And I'm doing what, think about when, when, when the children of Israel, when, when God sent death among them in Egypt. Everybody that didn't do what he told them, they died. Is that right? And what did he, what was it? The main thing that he told us to do in that passage of scripture, he told us to anoint your house with the blood. Anoint your house with the blood. Is that right? So I don't go nowhere. I don't care if we bagging out the yard when they go over. I'm just going to use somebody's name. Going over to Idaho, I pray and anoint. And we pray for we bag out that, out that yard. You know what I'm saying? See, un unchecked. I'm going to do these and then we're going to come back to the Holy Spirit. But this is getting to be juicy. Uh, uh, what the brother called on, on uh, Son of Black. This is the Holy Hooker. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah all right. On track, unchecked, what I'm trying to say, distraction, close our communion with God. Mm. See, the communion we take is more, when we take communion, it is more than just uh, juice and some crackers or juice and bread or water and bread or whatever. It's also fellowshipping and communicating with God. Yes, it is. But we yes, can cut is. that off. Oh, I'm saved. I, I can do whatever I want. No, you can't. 
tell anybody, I don't care if you but don't argue with them. You don't argue with, uh, I, I don't know what to say the word. Bible, Bible called them fools. Okay, then, Marie, they said the Bible called them fools, so I'm going to say, you don't argue with a fool. Don't argue with them. Argue with them. But you can cut off your blessing. Think about it. Yeah, God is good hearted. He's going to do everything he can for you. But you think that I'm, I'm a parent. And I'm good hearted and, and, and love my children. But there comes a time when you ask me to give you a, give you give you some money. No, I got to cut you off. What did you do with the last money I gave you? You get what I'm saying? Did mm -hmm. you spend it wise? Look at the scripture when he when he when he told them uh, told them uh, young lady what uh, what they were supposed to do. And when they didn't do what they were supposed to do, they. They didn't have a chance to be in part of the way. What about the men when, when, when the owner say, I'm going to give you, you, and you, and I want you to take my money, and I want you to go and add some money to it. The one what? The one that did what he told them, told them, told them to do. He wasn't distracted from what the master told him to do. Not only did he, not only did he take that money and add on to it, he ended up getting all of it. You know what I'm saying? What about the one who buried the money? No. That's what we do with our blessing. We bury our blessing. Close our community. Let's go to Luke uh, 10. Luke 10, that's it for today. Luke 10, 38 through the uh, 47. Still talking about distraction. And you know when you're talking about the distraction, when you're talking about that. The Holy Spirit is supposed to do what? Supposed, the Holy Spirit is supposed to teach us all things. Mm -hmm. Or you just like a student sitting in the classroom. Mm -hmm. You can't learn if you ain't if you distracted. Is that right? I know. I know. Is that right? Are you sitting in the classroom daydreaming? You distracted. What did I say to Luke 10. Yeah, 30. 30. Here we go. Ready? Mm -hmm. As Jesus to the 40 second. As Jesus and the disciples continue on their way to Jerusalem, they came. Let me check out it right. They came to a certain village where a woman named Martha. Welcome him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet. Listen to what this pay attention to this now. Listening to what he was teaching. That's the number of interpret. Listen to what he taught. But Martha was distracted. See that word again? But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord. Doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sit, sit here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, my dear mother, you are worried and upset over these details. There's only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it and it will not, uh, and it will not be taken away from her. She discovered the word of God. She understand the power. She understand life was sitting right there in her face. You get what I'm saying? All the things that she, she wanted to know more about, more about uh, uh, of what Jesus was teaching. On the other hand, the sister was, yes, it's important to get to dinner, but I want you to see how well I done prepared this meal. How well I done set the table. How well I, my social etiquette is all about. You get what I'm saying? I, I, that's what I want you to pay attention to. But then that was small matter. What was important there was what? Was what? The bread of life being taught by Jesus Christ. All right. So what I said, so what I'm, I'm asking you a question you already know. Top of the day, keep that on your mind and get ready. Don't let the world distract you 
from following God in the screen. Don't let, and we're going to talk about uh, uh, why it's so intelligent to remain focused. It's hard to stay focused, y'all. It starts, it's hard to stay focused and, and remain a child of God. You know what I'm saying? And because uh, I'm sitting here, you know, and I, uh, who that Elvira, who's a, uh, uh, well, she uh, texted me more and told me she went there and she told me why. But the other reason was I looked at the radar. She, she wouldn't have been able to make it down there from Jackson anyway if she wanted to. It's storming down there. So anyway, and she came and said, Rev, you just tell off everything on yourself. Yes, I do. <laughs> and what I'm saying, you get distracted. Because somebody did something I have not did in a long time, AC. I almost used one of the words on me that I used to use way back in the day. I almost used that word. You get what I'm saying? And I know what the response was. Oh, Rev, you, you don't do stuff like that. Well, I just did. But I didn't do it. Because I don't want to take them away. What? Distract them from, from being, you know, being a child of God. Because if I had done it, because I represent more than just a, a, a person. I mean, you know, I, mean, as a, yeah. I, I represent, I'm a preacher, so I represent God. You know what I'm saying? And if I did it, it might have pushed. If it was near God, then I just pushed him back a little further. Okay. So you have to be very careful on that. So what this morning, don't let the world distract right. you from following God's instruction. We'll come back and we'll finish, uh, and we'll finish this. All right. When we we'll come back, we're going to discuss the role, our royal lead, the role of the Holy Spirit, how the Holy Spirit works in our lives, and those are 